So I did my uh, uh, bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering from Gujarat, and I did my master's in CAD CAM from Pune. So I have published five research papers in international journals and conferences. And I have almost uh, six plus years of professional experience in the field of CAD CAM uh, and development of CAD CAM softwares. So currently I work as a developer in the special ACES 3D geometry kernel. So this is the major geometry kernel uh, commercial one available out there. And uh, I am uh, working in that field. So I'm also machine learning and computer vision enthusiast uh, at heart, and I want to implement this concepts uh, in the CAD CAM industry. So uh, most of you might have known that still the application of the machine learning in the CAD CAM industry is not well defined, or you can say it's not uh, available. Means uh, uh, it's it's just uh, you can say academic point of view. We are having the uh, uh, the research papers based on that it shows uh, we can, but the actual productization of that is still not available uh, widely in the CAD CAM industry. So my aim, or you can say my goal, is to uh, meet these two ends of the strings. So this is my GitHub profile, and this is my email ID if you need to contact me. Okay. So what we will cover in today's session. So the first session, or you can say the morning session would contain mostly the presentation and the second session, afternoon session will have some hands-on lab using PyTorch. So we'll go over what is actually artificial intelligence or machine learning. Uh, so brief overview on that. Uh, how this is classified, uh, what are the levels of uh, classification for these algorithms. We'll just introduce ourselves with what is deep learning. Then we, we will go into introduction of graphs. So the main highlight here, uh, what we want to discuss is the graph neural network, uh, which is a part of geometric deep learning. So for that, you need to have some basic understanding about what are graphs and uh, that how it will be used in our graph neural networks. So this is geometric deep learning layers. So this is not just one uh, algorithm geometric deep learning. So it is basically a combination of multiple architectures that are out there and they have just summarized them uh, as geometric deep learning. So there are different types of layers or different types of architectures that are used for this. So we'll not go into detail. I will just uh, briefly overview uh, two of them, uh, two of the layers that are most popular right now. And we'll go uh, with the geometric deep learning examples or in general AI or ML examples in CAD CAM industries. So I will show a demo uh, of uh, two or three videos based on where AI and ML is used in the systems. Okay, so we'll uh, start with the first slide now. So what is artificial intelligence and machine learning? So whenever you uh, as, as a, a beginner heard about the term machine learning and artificial intelligence, what does the first thing comes to your mind? So do let me know what does hearing machine learning and artificial intelligence comes into your mind? Anyone? So you can just uh, type in the chat window. Uh, what do you mean by machine learning or artificial intelligence? Just one word that comes to your mind when you heard this term. Okay. So Vignesh says some uh, creative statistics. Anyone else? Participants, you can also unmute. Yeah. That might give Aditya a good feeling also. Yeah, so if you interact, then it would be way better experience. So, uh, Shubham says learns, Google. Machine learns from the previous data that what we it have, and then create a model. And okay. Based on it gives the 
this is it take decision on the uh, on the data which uh, we are we will provide while we are testing it okay the real world, yes okay so this is basically the theoretical uh, definition of the machine learning right but if you uh, if you are novin so you can say if you are in general don't know about the term or the definition behind that and when you see the term machine learning and artificial intelligence right so some art may say google or you can say the uh, siri alexa cortana the virtual assistants so these are very popular right now so even if you have a apple mobile and you say okay siri and then you start with uh, the search term then it will provide you what uh, whatever you want to search for you you just have to ask him uh, or the, the virtual assistant what you require so this is a very good example where ai ml is been implemented and this is the most vastly developing field right now the natural language processing and all the stuff uh, is based on them so there might be some who are thinking as robots where robots are uh, basically the product of artificial intelligence and very own our chitti robot and the i robot or terminator so those are very you can say very futuristic uh, thinking of where ai and ml will come into picture there is again this tesla self driving car or you can say nowadays uh, multiple companies are working on the self driving cars where lots of things needs to be considered while driving because it's not safe to just uh, automate driving because there are various factors and self driving cars in india <laughs> so that would be very difficult because we, we ourselves do not follow our rules then how we expect the machine to follow the rules that are there so as you can see in this particular uh, image uh, so there are three cameras that are working there is again a lane detection that is happening in the background there is obstacle detection that is happening so multiple things comes into picture to just uh, make this product work using the ai and ml technologies and that not a easy job so it's very difficult to generalize this model in practical and yes so as vignesh uh, suggested statistics or you can say maths so behind artificial intelligence and machine learning application there is a whole lot of maths involved statistics involved linear algebra involved and that is the main backbone of this uh, ai ml so nowadays uh, most of the the field is so hyped that uh, no one wants to learn the maths behind them or how it is working behind them because it's very easy to now create new models on based on data even without understanding now using auto ml you can just create a model where you can detect faces and uh, you can just get a new ai based application very easily but the core or the core research point of view is the maths behind then how how that is come into picture yeah so this is uh, basically uh, what we mean by uh, ai ml so now so there are three terms uh, artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning so what exactly that is so artificial intelligence you can consider as a whole uh, you can say the most outer bubble of the uh, stream so it basically uh, is a way to build intelligent systems uh, which can think like human so currently thinking is the just speciality of human beings that we can react on that thing so we try to uh, evaluate or you can say simulate this type of behavior to the machines so this is the whole entire field where artificial intelligence come into picture and this is the you can say superset of everything this is the main thing uh, and inside that all the different types of algorithms come into picture so machine learning is a subset of AI, artificial intelligence so as uh, darshil suggested we learn on data we provide data to model it learns it and then we use it for uh, prediction in the future what happens 
so that is basically machine learning so we we teach the machine in such a way that it will try to uh, predict based on the past data that we have provided so so machine learning is just a subset of artificial intelligence and finally the deep learning or you can say neural networks so it is again a subset algorithms of machine learning uh, uh, bubble you can say so here we use neural networks uh, to determine or you can say uh, achieve complex uh, complex predictions which are not just uh, easily possible in the standard machine learning algorithms that are available and this is based on how a human thinks or how the information is processed uh, in the minds of human being it is based on that so deep learning or you can say deep learning means there are uh, we'll go into exactly what exactly deep learning and neural network differences but you can say it's a part of the, this uh, deep learning bubble so this is what ai ml and dl so these are the difference uh, between the three term that we in general regularly use interchangeably so now i want to ask you uh, how a machine learns so actually darshil has just answered that question but i want to know again what are the things required so that we can make the machine learn uh, the data uh we need a data then uh, we we can create a statistical model uh, okay and uh, then uh, based on that model we will predict uh, uh, our uh, real time world data or uh, uh, test data correct okay so you are absolutely correct darshil so first thing that is required is the data or you can say the data set so what is data set so the machine learning algorithms are trained on special kind of uh, you can say information and that information is basically called as data set now the data set are basically uh, we divide the entire data set we have into multiple sections basically the training validation and testing data set uh, so the data set can be anything any information for example there that might be numbers sequence of numbers that might be sequence of images text that is used in natural language processing and any such kind of data so all that comes into the part of data set so one thing that is required for machine learning is data set the second thing that is required is features so now the raw data that we have is not suitable to predict uh, exactly what we are trying to achieve so we we want to find some special uh, you can say uh, speciality in the data that we have which will differentiate uh, between the ordinary data and the data we want to predict so that is where features come into picture so from the data set that we have we find out special features that we need to detect so that we can get the final output so these are features that is required again uh, for the machine learning the another thing is we feed this particular information in different algorithms so i will just uh, go over after this uh, there are so many algorithms in machine learning so it is impossible or you can say it's very hard to know all the algorithms in detail so we feed this data to this particular sets of algorithm will then predict the output so depending on the algorithms the accuracy might be different some algorithms would be suitable for some type of work for example for clustering we basically use uh, k means clustering or other type of clustering algorithm but the same algorithm would not be uh, good for predicting the regression analysis like uh, predicting the stock prices so uh, all the algorithms are different in some way and they are suitable for some type of work and not all types of work in general and once all this data and algorithms and feature you have uh, this is used to train the model and finally what we get is the output or you can say the prediction so for example this can predict the uh, stock prices in new year future so if the model is trained on such data and this is what uh, machine 
uh, learning or you can say machine requires to uh, learn from the data. So now we'll go to the evolution of AI. So this is not a new term in general. So the concept or the theoretical definition of artificial intelligence uh, was uh, defined way back in uh, early 1950s. So at that time, the main limitation was that we had very little amount of data and the computing power at that time was very, very less, which was unable to satisfy the requirements of the so-called artificial intelligence at that time. So in the early 90s, we started getting new machine learning algorithms, which were suitable for uh, computing power at that particular point of time. And we had slightly more amount of data compared to what we had in 1950s. So the classical machine learning algorithms like regression, uh, logistic regression, classifier, all that came into picture in early 90s and that started creating the hype of machine learning in general uh, in the early 20s. So in the early 20s, or you can say around uh, 2010, we had again a large variety of data and also the size of the data was huge and the computers were evolved in such a way we had uh, GPUs at that time and GPUs just started coming in which then increased the scope of this uh, machine learning or uh, you can say the artificial intelligence that was termed in 1950s to actually practically come into picture using this uh, new computing power that we had and the evolution of deep learning models came into picture. So in the present time, in the present time, we have got so many types of uh, GPUs, uh, so much of computing power, and the data is also available everywhere in large quantity. And this is the place where we have now started using applied artificial intelligence. Now, as you can see in almost every field, in every company, every industry, they are now focusing on that uh, field of artificial intelligence and machine learning because that is the near future of every industry. Everyone has to go through this thing now because everywhere you look, there is machine learning or artificial intelligence involved. In the smartphone that you have, a lot of computing power is uh, there and a lot of machine learning uh, is actually embedded in that thing. Now, even uh, Apple has now started uh, implementing the neural engine in its hardware itself. In the iPhone itself, there is a special uh, processor which uh, processes the neural network stuff. So all the major industrial uh, partners are now focusing on this thing. So we are at this stage now where we are applying the concepts or theoretical concepts that we have learned so far in the research field to actually implement in the product productize this particular stuff. Okay, so now we'll go to the classifications of AI, ML, and DL. So these are just high level classification. So if you see uh, artificial intelligence, so artificial intelligence are majorly classified into three categories. Uh, first is artificial narrow intelligence. Uh, this is called as weak AI and Currently, we are at this stage. So here, it has got very narrow capability, or you can say it is based on task. And this is the present stage where, uh, where we are. We are just uh, uh, implementing one algorithm to, uh, uh, you can say, uh, do one task. So it is just, it has got that narrow capability where it just focuses on one task. The other is artificial general intelligence. So this is the place where we are moving forward to. And this has got a general capability or you can say uh, it can do two or three stuff uh, uh, based on that and not just one task. So it has got a general capability to understand the environment near it. And this is where we are going in the near future. The third and the final thing is artificial super intelligence or you can say strong AI. And this is where the things that are shown or that are shown in the movies like uh, the Chitti robot or you can say the Terminator, this all have the transcendent cap capability. So 
they can think for themselves and they can just they do, do not do the tasks just that they are assigned to them they learn from that they they apply it and they again uh, develop themselves by themselves uh, so no human intervention is required for that so this is called artificial super intelligence which is way near in uh, future so it's not in near future it's very far so we are just at the first stage of artificial uh, narrow intelligence stage now uh, if we classify the machine learning so machine learning is majorly classified into uh, three categories again so one is supervised learning so this is also known as task driven uh, learning so here we have a label set of data so we have already got a data which is labeled uh, for example if you think uh, between cats and dog so you have got images of cats and we know that this is cat and not a dog so that is already labeled data that we have and this labels allow the algorithm to find exact nature or you can say exact relationship between them right so this is supervised uh, task driven uh, machine learning so there are various algorithms these are just a handful or you can say subset of the algorithms for example support vector machine decision tree nearest neighbor logistic regression these are very famous logistic regression and those are used for stock market analysis and uh, predicting the price of some product in near future so this is supervised machine learning another one is unsupervised data uh, supervised machine learning so this is basically a data driven uh, algorithm or you can say so here we don't have label sets of data so the all the data is unlabeled and we want to find out uh, a relationship between them even without explicitly specifying what type of data it is so this is again there uh, there are many uh, algorithms but k means clustering as i mentioned already principal component analysis sub, uh, sub singular value decomposition so these are just some of the algorithms that are under the hood of unsupervised learning now there is one uh, type of learning which is mix and match of both so that is semi supervised learning so it is best of both worlds you can say uh, there are some uh, uh, labeled examples and we use that to uh, label the unlabeled examples so it basically combines the best of both things so advantages of both the things are there here and again it falls between the supervised and unsupervised category so these are some of the algorithms that are there in semi supervised learning that self training co training for example if you have got some set of test data which are labeled uh, we used to de develop a relationship uh, based on that labeled data and we have got some unlabeled data that we need to classify or you can say label those data so then that knowledge that we have uh, uh, you can say occupied based on training of the labeled data will use to classify this into uh, you can say label those data there so that is self training and co training and the third uh, third or you can say the fourth thing is the reinforcement learning now this is currently in very boom or you can say uh, industries are working lot on this uh, reinforcement learning uh, type of problem so it basically learns from error so here here also we don't have got uh, the data that is labeled but we try the machine to learn based on the errors for example uh, uh, a game of uh, chess so in the game of chess uh, yeah, it will run the chess multiple times and see how it will reach the final aim that is to win the game and based on the experience that uh, the algorithm gets uh, that is basically used uh, to get a stable model where even the environment is considered so this is uh, a lot more important uh, nowadays and this is used for research a lot compared to other algorithms uh, mentioned here so it tries to improve itself based on trial and error so it tries to know that no taking this step has got me a disadvantage so in future when i come at this point i will not use that step i will instead go to the other way so same thing happens here 
And these are some of the major algorithms that are available. The mark for decision process, Q learning, genetic algorithm. And these are just a subset of that. Now, a very good image that I found on the internet, uh, which just, you can say, uh, gives a glimpse of where such algorithms are used. So, just a second. Okay, so this uh, machine learning, when we go to supervised learning, so as I already mentioned, we have got label set of data in this particular section. So it is majorly subdivided in two tasks. One is regression task and other is classification task. So in regression task, uh, what types of application can be done? For example, advertising popularity uh, prediction, the click through prediction, weather forecasting, uh, sales marketing forecasting, so such type of problems are assigned, or uh, you can say can be tackled using the regression side of the supervised learning. Now the classification side are basically the image classification where we want to classify the images, cat or a dog. So such type of example are there in classification uh, side of supervised learning. Uh, fraud detection and email is a spam or not a spam. Customer retention means uh, will this customer will be retained seeing the behavior or pattern so such type of uh, application is comes under the hood of uh, supervised learning in unsupervised learning so there is dimensionality reduction so this is very important technique where we have got a feature of very large dimension and we want to reduce it so that the complexity of the problem is reduced so for that uh, this particular sets of algorithms are used and these are just a subset. There are multiple more algorithms available. Again, clustering. So in clustering, basically a recommended system where when you go to an uh, e-commerce website and you buy one thing. Uh, so based on your uh, buying pattern, it suggests you different more products. For example, if you have buy a mobile phone uh, based on such a company, uh, the next time when you log in or you just visit the e-commerce website, multiple uh, different types of mobiles would be there as a recommended thing that you have buy this product. Now, do you want to buy uh, another product uh, similar to that? Or for example, if you buy the mobile phone, do you want a charger or an earphone based on your buying pattern? So this all things comes into clustering or you can say recommended system uh, uh, sys uh, algorithms. The reinforcement learning is majorly used in the gaming side of the market, or you can see industry. A game AI skill acquisition means uh, this is used for analyzing the candidate before coming to an interview. Uh, is it applicable or not? The game AI means uh, now nowadays the modern games are so well advanced and they use that so. Every time you run the game, it would not be the same thing. There would be so many randomness involved in the gaming uh, that this is been achieved using this reinforcement learning, or you can see the machine learning behind the game engine that is used. So this picture basically summarizes uh, the usefulness of machine learning in different industries. So now we come to uh, deep learning and classification of that. So the most simplest, uh, you can say neural network is the artificial neural network or multi-layer perceptron. So it has got a single hidden layer in this uh, artificial neural network. Uh, in total, there are three layers. Uh, one is the input layer, the hidden layer, and the output layer. So this expects uh, input 1D input, and this inputs are then passed through the hidden layer, and that is then used for the prediction and the output layer. But this has got some limitation. We'll just uh, see those limit two limitation in uh, next slides. But one is that it cannot capture sequence information. For example, in the natural language processing, uh, this is the major limitation because when we speak some sentences, so in that sentence, uh, the one word is dependent on the few forward words and few words that we have spoken. So that integrity or that uh, sequence information, it cannot be captured by this uh, artificial neural network. And on what data it is suitable? So it is suitable for tabular data, image data, text data. So such data are 
it is suitable. So even for image data, uh, for small image, it is good. But for large image, uh, as it expects 1D input, the amount of input or amount of uh, neurons in the hidden layer increases uh, so exponentially that it basically, uh, it takes, you can say, it becomes more complex rather than uh, getting simple. Uh, to overcome that limitation, we have got convolution neural network, CNNs that are uh, way popular now and in everything in face detection, in your face unlock, everywhere this convolution neural network is now used. So this is most suitable for the 2D data. So it consumes the image directly rather than converting it to a 1D image. And this performs convolution uh, that will go into some uh, basic example of convolution. So this is just uh, various types of filters are applied on that to extract that features, uh, which differentiate between uh, the inputs. So this is majorly popular for yeah, image data and the text data. Recurrent neural network. So this is the main backbone uh, of the natural language processing that is there. So it has got a self connection or you can say a recurrent connection to the hidden state. So even the previous inputs or you can say uh, previous information is passed to the current uh, processing. And that is why we are able to capture the sequence detail that was missing in the artificial neural network. And what data it is suitable? So time series data, text data, audio data. So this is where natural language processing is most popular. The final is the graph neural network. So again, deep learning has got way more uh, architectures and types, but for major classification, these are the three major classification. And current one is the graph neural network. So there are other thing, but we'll just concentrate on graph neural network for now. So it is suitable where we have graph as an input and not an image or a text data, but a graph and that is being used for inference and to get the prediction what type of graph it is or uh, we'll go into detail about this. So yeah, majorly non-Euclidean data, network data, mesh points, etc. So this is what will be going in detail in this uh, session.